Today on City Cash Chicago, located on the lower west side between Ashland and Canal and about 16th Street to Surmac, is Pilsen. One of the coolest and most vibrant communities in our city is also known as one of the largest Mexican neighborhoods. But community organizer Tanya Lozano explains it wasn't always that way. Her grandparents were among the first Mexican families to move to the area back in the 60s. And fighting for Pilsen and her people has always been in her DNA. Tanya Lozano shows us her Pilsen. It's Thursday, January 5th. I'm Jacoby Cochran, and this is City Cash Chicago. We are back with another City Cash Chicago neighborhood guide, and we are in the neighborhood of Pilsen uh, with one of my favorite Chicagoans, Tanya Lozano. Tanya is a cultural organizer. She is the founder of Healthy Hood Chicago. Uh, Tanya, welcome back to City Cash Chicago. No, welcome back to Healthy Hood, Jacoby. It's always a pleasure to share space with you. Always just enjoy your energy and always feel very honored and privileged that you choose me for these kinds of things. Yeah, I appreciate you. I can't help but smile when you talk. Uh, but can you describe to people where we are right now at Healthy Hood Chicago? Because this is a place I have come for mass and for rallies and for birthday parties where I left. <laughs> and came back the next day to do yoga to get my mind and my body back. Be comprehensive, brother. <laughs> and so this, this is a huge place in this community. Can you describe Healthy Hood Chicago to people when they walk in the door? For sure. First and foremost, this is a church building. And like most uh, beginnings of revolutionary movements, it starts in the basement of a church. And that's really where Healthy Hood started. We provide a variety of different programming, fitness, wellness programming, um, we have the downstairs recreational center where we have the majority of our classes. And then in this space where we are right now, we call it Holy Ground. And this originally was a very traditional church space. You know, as we have this conversation, we'll learn about so much of the things you're involved with. But this neighborhood in Pilsen is never far from your your mouth when you are identifying yourself. How, cent how central is Pilsen to the story of, of Tanya Lozano? Oh, my God, it's everything. It is literally what made me who I am. My family has been here for generations now. In fact, the Lozano family was one of the first Mexican families to move into the neighborhood. At the time, it was mostly Polish and Czech, Czechoslovakian immigrants. Um, and I remember hearing stories from my mother because she moved here from Gary, Indiana. And uh, they grew up in a black neighborhood in Gary, Indiana. And that's kind of how that Mexican family, my Mexican family learned English. And so they had a lot of that slang. They had a lot of the, that energy. And so when they moved to Pilsen, they were looked at as outcasts. And um, they were harassed and they were called horrible names. Uh, people would ask them, why do they talk like black people and things like that. Um, but slowly but surely, this, this neighborhood started to welcome more and more Mexican immigrants. And it really has... It's always been in obviously a community of immigrants, but it's been Mexican for quite some time now. It's also where my uncle did the majority of his organizing work with the tortilla workers. He started the union there. Um, and now there's a library here named after him, Rudy Lozano Library. Um, and so we just have deep roots here. Uh, there's a lot of places that you'll go where you'll find like even pictures of my grandparents and things like that because they really are, we're, we're just so rooted in this neighborhood. Um, and the people here, like, there's something about this community. Anybody from Chicago will say when you come to Pilsen, like, be prepared to be greeted. I believe in 1960, the Mexican population in Pilsen, Mexican-American population was 14 percent. By the end of the decade, the majority of the people in this neighborhood were of Mexican descent, Mexican-American immigrants. But I love that you remind people that the story of immigration in this city is not you know, just all rosy. The, the white flight that took place in a community like Pilsen spurred a lot of organizing in this neighborhood for people to fight for resources, to fight to make sure the schools were adequate places that Spanish language speaking people could go. I was looking it up and before the 1960s, if you spoke Spanish, you were put in special education classes. Man, bro, my mom tells me this story that she went to Cooper School. That's right here in Pilsen, right? Growing up in elementary school, if you spoke Spanish, you would get hit, physically hit. 
it, it does cause a lot of, it, it, like you said, it's not rosy. Mm-hmm. It, immigration is not like a rosy picture, right? There's all of these different complexities that come with that. Um, and then also just integrating, assimilating to a new culture um, and then watching the white people leave because you're there. That's a lot. That's a lot to deal with. Yeah. I'm excited to continue to learn more about your, your personal history, the uh, history of this community, a neighborhood that is home to as much culture as this one. You can smell it in the streets. And if you walk into a spot, you can taste it. Uh, what are some of your favorite places to eat in the neighborhood? My favorite restaurant of all time in Pilsen is called Casa del Pueblo Taqueria. It's next to the uh, supermarket. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you go in there, the big round table right when you walk in, there's a picture frame with my grandparents there because they ate there every single day when they were alive at the exact same time every single day. When we were kids, until we were until they died, when you're little, as a Lozano, you always just order rice and beans and you mix them together and you eat them. But then as you get older, you get to try more of the stuff. It's cafeteria style and it's these older, I call them like comadres, which are like older middle-aged Mexican women who serve you. They are the sweetest people. If you go there enough, they'll know you by name. Um, The owners have been there forever and it just feels like home when you go there. It smells like home Um, and the food is just absolutely amazing. The best thing to get there is the beans, Um, but when I go there, I love the plate of barbacoa. So it's barbacoa with rice and beans. You get either flour or corn tortillas. They have great horchata. They have great aguas de piña, jamaica, and things like that. So that's the place that I would say is closest to my heart. Um, I would ask like new places. Frida Room is one of my favorite places to eat, like brunch, go there, take meetings. La Luna is another place that I absolutely love, and they have supported our work uh, several times here at Healthy Hood. What you Um, grabbing when you pull up? What do I get there? Mm -hmm. They have the birria tacos that I really love there. And also their carne asada is so good there. Um, Yeah, just delicious, delicious. Pilsen Yards is another place we like to hit up on Sundays. If we're taking a big group over there, the the host always knows us when we walk in because we never make a reservation. I went there for the first time after the Black and Brown Unity concert a couple summers ago. Um, and it was it was a good time. It was a good time. It's a dope spot, and they have this really cool like special room that's in the cut that's called the Alderman, and you could rent that out. And it's super like speakeasy style. KY is um, a fine dining restaurant, and they from Talia Hall. Oh my God, it is the most amazing food there. Like if you want to take somebody on a fancy date or something, you would find anything from like a short rib to, um, you know, calamari to, it, it's just like, you really don't, it changes because it's yeah. fine dining and it's so delicious. I had it on Sunday after I went to the Love and Nappiness concert. Um, I think one person got the salmon, so I got to try that. I loved how it was presented. Um, and then <laughs> me and the homie both got uh, got the short rib. That was That's my favorite, yeah, the rib. It was good. And the Madelines, I don't know if you tried the them. The cornbread oh. Madelines, G. Oh, my God, they were so good. I literally, we always take one to order home, We too. took like three minutes to describe it because it the outside is so crispy, so flaky, and then you bite into it, and it is the softest cornbread texture. And then they got the, the little. Butter. The butter. <laughs> The butter. Come on. Oh, you know what? Now that I think about it, delicious, delicious things you can find in Pilsen. Ivolinas tamales. Mm. The best tamales in Chicago. Period. Like, they are amazing. They have the, they're called tamale dinners. So they're like, they open up the tamale. It's mostly meat. It's very little masa. The masa is very, very moist. And then they put the rice and beans on top of it. And then they, lay, like, cover it, smother it in mole sauce. It is so good and i'm a tamale person okay Mm -hmm. these are the best tamales that you can find they have vegan options all type of stuff but Mm -hmm. ivolinas tamales is another one when you think about pilsen what are just some of your favorite things to do in the neighborhood, whether it's, you know, places to shop, places to visit. My favorite thing to do in Pilsen will obviously be at Healthy Hood because we have a ton of programming. It feels like sometimes we don't have to leave. Mm -hmm. In a given week, what are just some of the programs a person could expect if they come to Healthy Hood, whether it's first floor or second floor? Yeah, for sure. 
we have open mics. We have uh, pop-up shops where we bring local vendors from the community to come and sell their things. We have a recording studio, so there's people here, you know, recording their music throughout the week. We have dance classes. We have nutrition classes. We have family karate class. Um, so like I said, there's just things going on at all times. There's never like a moment where this place is empty. What are some other organizations, some other things you like to do in Pilsen when you step outside of this beautiful space? There's so many amazing things happening in Pilsen, specifically in the arts community. There's so many really cool galleries and small spaces. I know for me, the Mexican Fine Arts Museum is something that sticks out since I was little, just knowing that we have a space that showcases those things. There was an exhibit at the Mexican Fine Arts Museum that was the black and brown history of organizing history of Chicago. And Mayor Harold Washington and my uncle Rudy Lozano were featured heavily in that exhibit. And I just remember feeling just so seen uh, the Resurrection Project is another organization here that does incredible work. Um, obviously, we're facing gentrification like every other urban community of color um, right now, but they do an incredible job of finding property and placing low-income people there and, and really creating systems where they can sustain those people and give them the support that they need. Um, so, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of a lot of organization. It's rich in organizing, Pilsen. Yes. And like you said, it comes from history, like a history of rich organizing here. When you move through Pilsen, you, you talk about how vibrant this community is, how much color there is. You know, what are just some of the things people have to see when they come through this neighborhood? Mm, some of the things they have to see... I would say that the art here, obviously the murals everywhere you go in the Pilsen community are absolutely beautiful. There are murals here that have been here since before I was born. Some of those have been retouched up and they really do tell the history of organizing. Like people come from all over the city to contribute to the art here. Um, if you go downstairs of Healthy Hood, you'll find that every mural downstairs is of a revolutionary in the black and brown community. We have Chairman Fred downstairs, Elaine Brown, who was in the Black Panther Party. We have Malcolm X, um, Harold Washington, Rudy Lozano. Um, and I know they have like art tours and things like that, but I really just tell people like, just drive around, like spend some time because it, there's not one place you can go to find them. They are literally everywhere. Um, I would say, what else? Benito Juarez High School was fought for by, by this community, the Mexican community, so we could have our own high school, but they put this uh, whole display of Mexican traditional statues where you can walk around and see these massive statues of Mexican heroes and things like that outside of the high school, and it's really, really beautiful. I mean, in this neighborhood, you've gone from, you know, little girl to young person to grown woman to raising your own little people. That journey, um, I imagine, is challenging, but also beautiful. Can you speak to it a little bit? For sure, yeah. I mean, I think about my childhood all the time to grow up as a child of a revolutionary and how when you're younger, you, you know, you're taken around to these places and these activities and these people that are suffering and you're watching your parents, you know, do all they can to support them. And, and sometimes like I remember being a kid and being like, I don't want to do this. I want to play with my friends. I want to be a kid. I want my parents to give me that attention. And then finally growing up and, and slowly realizing how very special my childhood was, how I was surrounded by a community, not just my parents. And community has really just been everything, everything. And, you know, now that I'm raising kids, there's, I tell this to every parent, like when you're growing, like when you're a grown up and you look back on your childhood, you ask yourself like very serious questions. Was those things I went through actually preparing me for adulthood? And I know for me at home, I got a lot of that. I got a lot of really valuable education, but from the public school system, I did not. And so as an adult living in this community, I, you know, I had to really like come to terms like, do I want to send my kids to public school? I have them at a Waldorf school, which is in the area. It's Urban Prairie, right on Ashland and 13th. And it's, um, you know, it's a, a completely alternative learning kind of play institution. And I had to fight to get my kids scholarships there. They didn't have a scholarship fund when I, when I originally applied. And it's way too expensive for people from our neighborhood to go to. I am proud to say that we created a scholarship fund there. Um, so now other black and brown kids will have access to that, that education in this community, which is the community that they're closest to, which makes sense. And now they're in the process of becoming a public charter school so that more of our kids can go there. And that's because we fought for that. And so 
all of that comes from growing up with a mom who fought to get my school changed, the name of my school changed to Rudy Lozano, you know, fought to get another school built because ours was overcrowded, like knowing that you don't have to take no as yeah. an answer and fighting for the resources that our community ultimately deserves. I want you to give that last pitch to the person listening to this neighborhood guy, because you know Chicago, so many neighborhoods, so many areas. What is your pitch for somebody to come through, pull up on Pilsen and immerse themselves? Hmm. I would say... If you're coming to Pilsen and you're trying to immerse yourself, first do a little bit of research. Find out the history of the neighborhood, who lives here. Don't go in there with any like pre-notions, pre-assumptions or anything like that. You'd be surprised how diverse this community is. I know, you know, off rip, somebody would tell you that it's predominantly immigrant and Mexican, but that is changing now. There's a ton of creative specifically of color that are coming here because this community is attracting that demographic. It is, in my opinion, the Arts District of Chicago. I think it needs to officially be named that. Um, but it's a vibrant community. And what I know of revolution is that the creatives are the soul of revolution, are the soul of the nation. And that means this community specifically has a lot of power in the direction that the city is going to go in. And so if you're coming here, you know, just be open minded, be willing to learn from who it is that you're that you're around. And just know that if you do come here, you're going to be welcomed with open arms because people are ready. People are ready to, to grow and, and community is what we do. Uh, Tanya, I really appreciate you. Um, we're going to put some places that weren't in this conversation on the guide so people should make sure they go to City Cash Chicago and Instagram to get the full neighborhood guide. Um, you know, places like the Apo Cultural Center, the National Museum of Mexican Art. There's just so much happening in this community, but I appreciate you, Tanya, for sitting down with us here at Healthy Hood Chicago. I, I love this space. I love being here. Um, and it's always a pleasure to talk to you. Same. So glad you came through, bro. Before I let you go, a little bit of news, y'all. Hang in there with me real quick. I got to get y'all these last little headlines before we go. Chicago Public School students will be back in the classroom next Monday as another uptick in COVID grips the city. But according to a Chalkbeat report, no one at CPS is keeping track of how many students have been receiving updated booster shots. Now, the district says they only have records for vaccinations that are self-reported or administered at a school. 181 families have been displaced from their homes at Hyde Park after two apartment buildings lost heat, water and electricity on December 23rd. Yes, during the height of the cold that week. The Department of Buildings ruled that the owner, Mac Properties, was responsible for the power outage due to unpermitted electrical work. The CTA is set to receive $2 million in federal funding to study what the city would need to reopen the Green Line at 63rd and Racine. It's been closed for basically 30 years. Inglewood neighbors in the 16th Ward will also get to vote in the February election on whether or not the stop should be reopened. And some good news to get you through. For all my dog lovers out there, the Great American Dog Show is coming to the Renaissance Schaumburg Convention Center Friday through Sunday. You can meet over 200 breeds of dogs, and they got a kid's corner with plenty of activities. As always, we appreciate you for listening. Hopefully, you're reading our daily newsletter, Hey Chicago. If not, sign up at chicago.citycast.fm. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Peace. Thursday, January 5th, 2023. All I got to say is happy birthday, T.